You ever have dairy free ice cream? Yes. Yeah, is it ice cream though? It's disgusting. <gasps> it's not ice cream. Some of it is good. Like, okay, what, name the brand. What's Halo. Good? Halo. Halo oh, top. Oh, you know what? I gotta admit. I gotta admit that Halo's not that bad. It's good. Exactly. But I but I, but I would gotta I gotta exactly. go to the law of opposite. It's not that good. Okay. Have you tried the Trader Joe's? Yeah, it's good for being a non dairy ice cream. Okay, that's but fair. But it's not a that's good fair. ice cream. La- last night, Kalon at our house made uh, these desserts. Oh. They are, you know, it's every health ingredient yeah. you could ever imagine. The most tasty thing in it was a strawberry and a raspberry. Oh. <laughs> and I just tried to imagine the night before, well, two nights ago, Sunday night, you know, you guys know I'm, I'm a McFlurry guy. I mean, it's on the wall. I'm yes. a McFlurry guy. Yeah. Every Sunday night. Sunday night, I needed, I needed my dessert. I needed my fix. It's how I end Sunday nights. So I had a chia pudding Ooh. with blueberries in it. What a texture. It's just, <laughs> guys, at this point, it's just all sad. I don't even like chia pudding for breakfast. It <laughs> <laughs> well, we I are, think we the are way you said breakfast was sensational. You, you figured <laughs> out that you don't eat breakfast. You just drink tea. Well, yeah. yeah, that's mostly true, I guess. Yeah. It, uh, the, <laughs> my point is, all of these, you know, you go to Air One or Whole Foods and like these supplement desserts. It's just like not having any fun, isn't it? Why does it cost more to taste worse? Yeah, that's yeah. well, because they've had to use all these ingredients. Processes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And like you look at all, all the detail of it. It's like, gosh, you guys worked really hard to create something that's like has zero value. <laughs> Dang. Like the product is so bad, like truly, but uh, but but you know what I I keep on noticing is like uh, people's jaw lines. It's oh. like people look snatched when they eat right and they they're all healthy and their carrots and their celery lifestyle and kale. It's like that's what you kind of gotta put in the work. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah. The only problem with putting the work is that you have to sweat and eat healthy. And that guys, let's be honest, who wants to do that? <coughs> yeah. Mm. When you could cough up a storm, who could? Well, yeah, who when you could just get yeah, sick and not on? eat, it's yeah, and just fine. cough yeah, constantly, it's fine. right? It's not a big I'm deal. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I just think that it's a, you know I'm looking at a photo here of my son, and he's having look at this picture of this this handsome devil, and he's just he's gobbling up. You think there's any health involved in this ice cream? Zero. This is it's like a blue. This is an Elsa. Yeah, that dough. color looks just like they went out of their way to make it the worse for you. Color. Has calories. The color has Looks calories. Looks great. It's unbelievable. <clears throat> we have for us another five more days. Is that right? Five yes. whole days until the fast is over. And I think I, t- I said this last episode, did I not? I'm not I'm not ending. Oh, no, you didn't. No. Oh, yeah, I'm keep go- I'm going to keep going. Okay. Yeah, I'm a man of God. You, hmm. guys, you guys know this about me. I'm a man of God. Right. Why would I break the fast and go right into our conference? Yeah, no. A leadership, a live leadership lean in lunch Whoa. where Makes I've sense. just been having pizzas and, and ice cream oh, God. and, and hamburgers and French fries. So good. And you then, should break and, it at the lunch. No, I'm going to break it. I'm going to break it Saturday afternoon. Mm. Yeah. Saturday afternoon. I'm thinking like glorious prime pizza. Yes. Juice to sandwich. Oh, all of my social media is food right now. Oh, yeah. Same. It's insane. I just sent Julia earlier uh, uh, a video <coughs> of... Uh, <coughs> Nate's a big cougher over here. Yeah. I'm sorry, guys. It's okay. Can't stop coughing. <laughs> um, but, but um, you know, I just sent Julia this video of uh, this guy, the top five sandwiches he had last year in 2023. Oh, yeah. And it's just like, they, they look off the charts. Mm. Yeah. It's, it's ridiculous. I can't even stomach how good it looks i'm gonna endure these next well you guys are at five because you're not on my level right (laughs) exactly true i've got about eight or nine days and then it's it's off to the races but i feel like i'll be leading better it's kind of like that story about andy stanley when when he stopped uh when he stopped drinking coffee over you ever heard a story? Wow. And their team's and, like, and his um. team came to him and said, "Hey, Pastor Andy, would you <laughs> please continue? Would you, would you start drinking coffee again?" And he goes, "Why? Oh, your energy's off. Uh-huh. You know, like you don't, you're not yeah. bringing energy to the meetings. But you're not a low energy guy. I am not. Leaners, hear me. We're gonna jump into content, but just know this about: I'm not a low energy guy. No. If I ever brought low energy, I would die. 
Mm-hmm. It's kind of my biggest fear is to be a low energy guy, just a an Eeyore of a fella, just a lump on a log. <laughs> I'm trying to remember what you were like when you did give up coffee. Oh, that was, a, <laughs> oh gosh, that was a couple years ago. High, I, high energy irritation. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like not, it's seared in my not memory. Good. Hit, <laughs> hit the Nick Saban. This is what happened. You all may be taking the week off, but I'm not. That's how I sounded uh, in every <laughs> email, text, meeting, just ticked off. <laughs> but I will uh, hit Craig Rochelle. Well, the habits you have today will shape who you become tomorrow. Whew, that's how I feel right now, just sharp. Yeah. Really good. That man right there, are you kidding me? Numchucks. Numchucks. I was going to say the same thing. That guy is, that guy is <laughs> lethal. He's not even... All right, let's jump into it. Let's get it. It's unbelievable. <laughs> Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Leadership Lean In, where we lean back, kidding, we lean in and do the rock away. We are trying to get a little bit better. We cannot, it's impossible. We, it's just, we, we're not going to promise perfection. That would just be futile. But what we are going to promise is progress, mm-hmm. as always promised and delivered progress thank you to every person that is liking subscribing in fact all the youtubers hit the subscribe button help us uh comment even the pod share the pod thank you for everybody that so many people are so kind they post it and they share it and they go you gotta listen to this or they put a 10 out of 10 and unbelievable unbelievable you put out a clip today april from uh the last one that you aired Mm -hmm. and it's going crazy. The content. On the shares. No, it's it's the editing. Oh. Mm. It is not what's well. being spoken, <laughs> April. It doesn't matter what. Yeah, what actually, it's the it edit. could just be. Well, thanks. It's, it's, it's the font. <laughs> <laughs> Next time, we'll just do a video of, like, I don't know, a meeting, and we'll see if it's my editing. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, honestly, I, was, I just looked a, a minute ago. I was like, oh, wow. It's great. Crushing. Uh, we are very excited about all things. Uh, obviously we're starting off the year with, uh, 21 days prayer and fasting for us. And we want to make sure everybody knows next week. Sorry. When this airs today, Mm. today, today is the day tonight starts our Zoe conference. And I want to let you know tomorrow you have an opportunity in Los Angeles, California to come do a live recording of leadership, lean in leadership, lean in live special guest, Earl McClellan. Get on a train, plane, automobile, do whatever you got to do. We're kicking off things tonight at the Heralded Great, uh, uh, a notorious Angelus Temple. And then tomorrow, Leadership Lean In Live. Do not miss it. Do whatever you got to do. Get a ticket. It's going to be sensational. And there's something special. The last time that we had a Leadership Lean In Live together was Chris Durso here at the office. Mm -hmm. That's right. 100th episode. Mm -hmm. To be specific, 43 episodes ago. Yes. That's correct. And, and and now we're doing another one. It's going to be off the charts. And remember, all these people came together for that. Right. Flew in and hung out. That's crazy. Um, Hayden from Vegas, um, our friends from Houston, uh, Ray Ramsey from Alabama. I mean, just people flew in from all Bakersfield. And so we're coming together tomorrow, Leadership Lean In Live, lunch, a lot of L's. Do not take an L and miss. We're coming together. Hey, we're going to take a quick break from our Leadership Lean In podcast and shout out one of our sponsors. Shout out to Overflow. Head over to overflow.co to get everything you need to empower your organization and fundraiser for the most creative and innovative ways to receive giving and to empower your people to give in innovative ways. This is what I love about Overflow. Uh, two things. And, and I'm I, the first one I shout it out every time because I'm just blown away by their customer service, by their team, by their support. It's amazing. But number two, how easy their platform is to use. And if you want to empower your people to give, not just uh, cash or um, in traditional ways, people are getting creative. It's 2024. Yeah. They can give in all sorts of ways. Crypto, they can give stocks. Uh, there's all sorts of different ways. So head over to overflow.co slash LLI to book a demo and to get connected with her team. Okay, this week. I'm stuck and I can't get out. Oof. There used to be a commercial. Um, it was the clapper. And the famous line was, I've fallen and I can't get up. 
Oh, that's not the clapper. Wasn't that life alert? That's life. That's life. <laughs> <laughs> right clapper. when I said it, I was thinking. <laughs> I'm like, clapper? Clapper was the light. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I yeah, sometimes yeah. like, oh, I must be thinking of something else. The cla- <laughs> 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 right when I said I was like, I don't think you're right. <laughs> I don't think you're. But the confidence was there. I don't think that this is. When you just talk, you just start saying yeah, stuff. Yeah, that's fine. Like it's, like it's factual. <laughs> like it's biblical gold. <laughs> Two iconic ads, though. Yes. Okay, okay. Yeah, both were very uh, effective to a degree. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I've fallen. I can't. What did you say was the product? Life alert. Life alert. I've fallen and I can't get up. I think, you know, leadership, there is those that fall. You know, they fall into, you know, you 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 name the fall. You, I'm sure your imagination goes to all kinds of, you know, when we say the word, they fell. It's like, okay, we usually it's it's one of three things the gold the girls the glory that's kind of usually you know yep there's a there's a fall there okay but what what i think happens to most leaders they don't fall they get stuck Hmm. and getting stuck's hard getting stuck is you because you just you know that you've hit your ceiling and you're like i would do anything to raise my ceiling Hmm. how about I'm, i'm stuck and i can't get up i can't get out i cannot figure this out and so i want to give you three things today that might encourage you to move forward you're gonna have to you know obviously when you get stuck uh uh get a pen and a paper write down a lot i i I believe in this habit i call it a brain dump i do it quite often a few times a week i just dump out my brain and all my thoughts and the categories that i've created of my life I, that's how I preach. I take the subject and I just brain dump. I think when I'm, whenever I'm stuck, I just kind of start writing what's stuck. Why do I feel that? Identify. Give it a name. Deflate, you know, the, the taunting, you know, Goliath that's going like, you're never going to be better. It's never going to change. You got to kind of identify what's going on here. So I'm going to give you three things. Number one is you need to communicate your expectations. And I think this becomes very big because a lot of times when I'm stuck, it's I've, I'm feeling I'm stuck with people that are around me, Pe- my my team. Uh, it's 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 first of all with me, and then it goes into our eco, our world, our you know who we're working with. And I love this quote that I found: "Unspoken expectations are premeditated resentments." Mm-hmm. Unspoken expectations are premeditated resentments. And I just like that because a lot of times we're carrying so much resentment and we're we're hurt and we're upset and we're frustrated. But I'm always like, do they know what you expect? Right. right. Yeah. Do the people around me know? I always think leadership is easy in the sense where I've got to set set parameters, boundaries, visions, and values and standards. And then I just police the culture because the culture or the vision or the expectations of our, this is what I love about God. God already did this for us. God already said, these are my expectations. These are the commandments or boundaries that I want you to. So God's not going like, oh, I'm so frustrated, but man, I wish I could tell you the truth of what I really wanted you to do. Yeah. No, God just, he tells you. And so I think that so much leadership is communication mm-hmm. and you cannot be a great leader and be a bad communicator. I don't care if you if you communicate best over text, over email, in person. You got to find ways. To, and by the way, we communicate in so many ways. Yeah. We communicate with our body language. We communicate with how we dress and our attire and how we take care of ourselves. You're sending so many signals of what you're about. It's so funny. I, I you know, Aaron Andrews' podcast. Have you seen uh, her and that other girl? That's like a, they're both sideline reporters. Carissa Thompson, I think, is the other one. And they were talking about um, how hard it is to find a guy, you know, and social media cringe. And they were saying, you know, when they go to social media, they kind of tell what kind of guy it is. Oh, yeah. And they say, (laughs) if he's posting selfies, we don't want any part of it. No part. Think about that. (laughs) Selfies used to be cool. Now these girls are going, if you post selfies, you communicated something to me that I want no part. Yep. So you're always in the communicate. I think... Leadership is being in sales. Yeah. You're in the people business. Right. You're selling. Uh, for, for me, I'm selling a higher product, which is not me. Mm. I know that my life is, a, it, it's a, I'm an ambassador. I, pre, I represent someone bigger than myself. 
But nevertheless, I want to represent them really well. That's right. So I do everything I can to make sure I'm a good representative yeah. of the brand that I'm about or the, the person that I'm trying to sell, right? I think you got to communicate like crazy. It's true. People do not know 100% of what you're not saying. So good. So well, everything, say it again. Say it again. Everything that you're not saying, people don't know. Yeah. So they only know what you communicate. Mm. So, so if you've got all these expectations and desires and wants and frustrations, if you're not saying it, how do you expect people to excel? Mm. How do you expect to have good relationships? I think a lot of times we have these premeditated resentments and we don't understand we're the problem, not them. Wow. You, 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 you go into cultures and you marvel. How did they get all these great leaders? Great leaders are not found. Great leaders are developed. Yeah. And you develop people. You develop those that are around you. How do you do that? You talk to them. You communicate with them. You hold people responsible. Or another word for that is accountable. But I cannot have <laughs> unspoken expectations. Mm -hmm. yeah. I find that the most frustrated people are going like, they, how come, so-and-so. And I'm like, did you tell them what you expected? Mm -hmm. Right. Because a lot of times, if you tell people, I expect you to be here at eight, generally they, they come at eight. Mm -hmm. If you tell people, I want you to have your camera on, generally if you told them, they would have their camera on. You have to, that's a Zoom joke for our 6 a.m. prayer people. You understood it right away. Uh, <laughs> no shots fired. I, I didn't expect. I didn't it's okay. expect. It's okay. I, this next round, you better get ready for August. But you know, but <laughs> does that make sense? Yeah. And I just think, you know, think about the power of premeditated resentment. Do, do you think that, sorry. No, no. Do you think that that's how culture has become maybe hyper obsessed over a leader versus a vision? Mm. is the leader doesn't communicate the vision well or the goal or their expectation. So now the whole organization is trying to please this imaginary or what they think they're, they're shooting in the dark going like, I hope this is what they, they want to do well versus yes. this is the vision. Guessing. That we're, yeah. That's exactly right. Because how, how, would, how could I be empowered with it without you giving me vision? Mm -hmm. And I just think this is, again, Jesus is the greatest leader we've ever seen. Mm -hmm. He is so good. Watch what he does. I'm sending you out by the twos. This is exactly what I want you to do. Yeah. yeah. And they come back and they go, oh, we saw some stuff. <laughs> yeah, because you just, you carried his vision. Yep. So I think leadership is about being very good at, Finding ways to take the vision off the walls and putting it into people's hearts. Mm. And I think that it's hard for, it, it, we're being honest leader, it's very hard for you to communicate your expectations because you think that you won't attract or you won't, people won't rise to your expectations. Maybe you feel like your expectations are too high or unreasonable. I don't know a great leader that has small expectations. Mm -hmm. That's true. Wow. They just don't. You, you think Nick Saban has small expectations? No, come on. How you win championships with small expectations. Right. And anybody, any leader that's like, oh, shucks, you know, I don't want to be hard on people and I just want to make it easy. And I just, you know, that's a lot of hours. That's a lot of work. And you are apologizing for the vision that's in your heart. Hmm. How are we going to move forward? If you're a you're going to live with a bunch of resentment. Yep. So if you're stuck, maybe it's not them that's stuck. Maybe it's your your ability to communicate your expectations and your ability, furthermore, to be at peace and at rest with the God-given potential that's on your life. It's bigger than it's you really think good. it is. It's a bigger dream. So we got to communicate. The second thing is you need to sharpen your edge. And I love this idea. I love this thought about being sharp. I think if you're a leader, you should be sharp. I went the other day, um, I went out to Malibu, yeah. And I took um, Winston with me to go see um, the great coach, R.J. Barsh, shout who out. is now, yes, yeah, shout out 253, who is now coaching for Gonzaga. And so they were playing Pepperdine, Pepperdine versus Gonzaga. And my buddy who's coaching for him hit me, you want to come? And I was like, I absolutely want to see you and support. So I drove out there to Malibu, ya. The dumb, d dumb decision here. I thought, you know, game's at 7, I can leave my house at 5. Hmm. I'm not going to, PCH is going to be a breeze going that way. 
what? Am yeah, I am it's I worse am, than am, the am, I, am I new? Am I new here? <laughs> yes. Sat on the PCH. My, total miscalculation. Let's communicate our expectations a little bit better next time. Traffic. Insane. Get out there and just like I've always loved this guy has gone. He was the head coach at SCU. Then he went to Boise State. Then he went to Florida State. Now he's at Gonzaga. And you just see him carry himself with such excellence. Sharpness. I think you ought to be known being sharp. It's that whole like for us in our world, it's like I want to have a Bible in one hand and a newspaper in the other. Yeah, mm-hmm. Know what's going on in the world. I'm really, you know, astute and really, you know, comfortable, literate with with my craft and what I'm what I'm supposed to do. And but sharpness to me is just like it's it's what's in your eyes. Yeah, it's the authority of your voice. It's the it's the moxie and the prowess and the confidence you carry. It's going like this person plays no games. They're sh- this is um, they're not the sharpest tool in the shed, but they're sharp. And I think you've got to find a way to sharpen your edge. The reason why most leaders are not sharp is because their edge has grown dull. Mm. Why is their edge grown dull? Because they've been using their axe. Mm. And so if you want to be great at what you do, you got to not keep swinging. You got to sharpen your That's edge. Great. Sharpen that axe. It's great. I heard this great quote from Abraham Lincoln uh, recently. And he said, if you gave me six hours to cut down a tree, I'd spend the first four hours sharpening my blade and the next two hours cutting down the tree. Amazing. And that's putting preparation over performance. Yep. I think a lot of times a leader thinks about their performance, but I think leadership is thinking about your preparation. Wow. Preparation is where your separation begins. In fact, you know, it's that whole saying, we sweat in preparation so we don't bleed in battle. Yeah. In fact, I think preparation brings forth freedom. When you're prepared, you're free to be yourself. You're free to be comfortable. You're free to take meetings. You know, I I do my best to be prepared for where I need to go. In fact, if I'm traveling somewhere, you know, let's take New Orleans. I just recently went to New Orleans. I like to look. I want to go through the itinerary. I want to know where I'm at moment to moment. I look at the at the at the at the, the church I'm going to go to and the photos and maybe the last couple messages and go through the stock their Instagram. I like to look at the hotel. I always look at my hotel. Where am I staying? I, I like I like to look at like you know what is the restaurants there and the pool and I like to know my surrounding. What are the restaurants around it? I like to visualize and be prepared because I think that's what makes me sharp. Yeah. I don't like being around people. Where are we? What are we doing? Hit me with the Michael Scott. <laughs> Pearly worm gets the worm. You don't got a clue what you're saying. <laughs> no. Sharpen your edge. What? So the question here, leader, is what makes you sharp? What is it that makes that, you know, is it having a conversation with a close friend? Is it? It's a, it, it, uh, come on, it's a cocktail of great things. It's a cocktail of right decisions that just makes you sharp. It's just like going to bed early, eating the right diet, reading the right stuff, having a disciplined life, doing the stuff that just makes you feel alive. And if you're dull right now, maybe it's just because you've been swinging that ax. Mm. Maybe it's not because you're a bad leader. Maybe it's, you, you, you know, you don't have a day off. You, you're not, maybe you need to take a nap. Maybe you, whatever you got to do, get sharp. Don't you love when you're around a sharp leader? Mm-hmm. Totally. It makes you step up your game. Right. That's it. Exactly. And, and you see someone that's sharp, you, you know it. Yeah. It, 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 it's so funny in LA, you know, someone comes into a coffee shop and then they walk out. Everybody goes, who was that? Yeah. <laughs> right. A hundred percent. You think they say that about some Eeyore, some dude that just rolled out of bed? You know, it, who was that? No title. No, no, we don't know the name. It's just the, it's the way they walk. It's the way yeah. they conduct their business. I think that to me, we know that leadership is not a title. It's not a position. It's not a corner office. Leadership's who you are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so put the investment into you. Because the more you invest into you, the greater blessing you will become, the greater leader you become. Yeah. And and the sharper you, your team needs you to be sharp. That's right. That's right. 
Your team needs you to be rested and ready and prepared and, and focused and not distracted. I, I love this concept. I love this idea of how much is it going to take for you to not be distracted? Mm. You got to ask yourself that question. How much is it going to take for you to not be distracted? That's great. Because there's a price there. The distraction comes with a price tag and focus does too. So what do I got to do? What do I got to give up? To be focused. It's why I'm going to continue my fast. It's yeah. great. Smart. Right? Because mm-hmm. the I know is a price. Focus comes with a price. That's right. And I'm willing to pay the price. But come Saturday afternoon, that we, we're not be willing to pay that <laughs> price no more. Amen. You pay the piper. <laughs> did, did you did you ever grow up chopping wood? Of course. In Washington? Mm. Yeah, I, I, I remember growing up chopping wood. And eventually the, the axe would get dull. And it would like, I wouldn't be able to split the wood. It'd be, it would become a hammer. Yeah. And I, th- I feel like a lot of leaders, when they're not sharp, they get, they just start smashing things. They get angry. They get irritated. How come things aren't so come it's not efficient? Working. You know, and it's like, if you want to move this thing forward, you got to, you, if you're angry, it's probably just because you haven't yeah. been around sharp. You haven't sharpened your, you haven't rested. Yeah. You haven't, it's you good. know. And I, I think there's nothing worse than just, you know, you keep hitting that piece of wood, just bouncing off. <laughs> Gosh. And, and, and it's counterintuitive, right? Because we think swing harder. Right. That's our natural, Mm -hmm. you know, two plus two equals four. Swing harder. Work harder. Right. I I just, can I just, can I ask you, do you think you really can work harder than you're working right now? I don't think that you can. (laughs) You're working as hard as you can. So it's not a work ethic. Right? It's finding the right balance to get you rest and to get you confidence and to get you a, 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 a sense of belonging and a sense of acceptance so that you're feeling like, man, I really am confident in what I'm doing. Yep. And that's when results don't define you. Yeah. Because you just, you're, you, you're, you're more excited about the work than the results of the work. Mm. I think that when you're not sharp, you, you're, you're so focused on results. Yeah. But when you are sharp, you're just like, the work is so fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love swinging this ax. Yeah. I love doing what I'm doing. Here's the last one, third one, is you can make excuses or you can make progress, but you can't make both. Yeah. I'm stuck because of them. I'm stuck because of the recession. I'm stuck because of the interest rate. I'm stuck. I'm stuck cause... No, no. Mm-mm. You can make excuses or you can make progress, but you cannot make both. Yeah. And so that's why I, I'm fully convinced that leadership is extreme ownership right yeah. just owning like i've i it's it's me high hmm. all the way from buffalo i'm the problem i'm just <laughs> well they, they, they were actually yeah. were not the problem there they they actually did you see jason kelsey that was pretty cool oh it was amazing that's a, that, what a brother yeah and he jumps in he grabs that that's girl so brings good. her that's i mean he what what uh, new shout out to new heights i mean these guys are just on new heights new Heights. Um, <laughs> but I like this idea that um, the the privilege I have is to accept responsibility mm-hmm. and to take ownership and go and it's stuck because of me. Right. Yeah. It's not stuck because of the team or because of my my schedule or because of our budget. It's stuck because of me. I haven't been able to figure it out. I haven't been able to get this done. I haven't. And I just kind of like that because it's rather than than playing that victim mentality that something happened to me. I think it's better as a leader to go, something's going on in me Mm. that I got to fix. I got to resolve. I got to heal. I got to solve. I got to get more wisdom. I got to get greater exposure. I got to get a a greater vision, a greater dream. That's the real problem. Yeah. Yeah. What would you say to someone who kind of swings the other side of the pendulum in that they think, Everything is their fault. I'm so guilty. I'm the worst. I struggle, which would be kind of like a, a more on the other side. What would you say to help kind of because I think that that would be a lot of leaders. A lot of people are mm. maybe overthinking that. Mm. Um, where would you draw the line between identifying variables in a situation mm. and taking ownership? That's such a good question. I think it goes back to the brain dump. Because I do think that there's sometimes you can identify, okay, where uh, are other people at fault? Where are other people? I need to help them grow. But I think it always starts with me. Leadership starts with me. Leadership always starts with me. So I, th- I like to first just go like, what can I fix? What can I do better? 
Where did I fail? Where did I not communicate my expectation? And then get to other people and go, okay, I see here, maybe with them, we could try this. Maybe with this person, but it might be good to develop here. Let's put a focus of this in this season. So I do think that there is, I mean, come on, in everything moderation, in everything moderation. So I don't want to beat myself up because then it's kind of the whole thing. If you live by the praise, you'll die by the criticism. Mm. I'm, I don't wear a, a cape. I'm not a superhero. Yeah. So I have great limitations and I'm only as good as the people around me. But I do like starting with going like, what could I have done better? Yeah. Well, I think extreme ownership kind of assumes extreme self-awareness. Yeah. That's you good. Know, when you're, when you have extreme self-awareness, you go, ah, oh, this is the end of my capability. Yeah. That's now great. I need a team. That's great. And yeah. so owning, yep, I, I got to get better here. So yep. let's hire, you know, those weaknesses as I develop. That's it. Right. Because I think, you know, um, getting stuck is a frustrating feeling, right? Mm -hmm. And it's, oh man, why is it not working? And that blade's not just bouncing off that wood. And man, I want to push the lid. Okay, well, um, you're trying as hard as you can. Clearly to raise your lid, you need to raise your capacity. We mm -hmm. got to increase your capacity. Yeah. Okay. A lot of times when you increase your capacity, it's not about what you're saying um, yes to is about what you say no to. It's great. Your no becomes more powerful than your yes. But then after that, you figure out your life. It's about getting the right people around you Yep. and identifying for them. It's the whole value for me is growing with an organization. Mm -hmm. And you see an organization grow and someone hasn't evolved and changed and developed with it. And so now the, the organization's here, but this person's back in. So they're in, let's use iPhone. They're in iteration 15. And this, this person, for some reason, got stuck at iteration five. Hmm. And so can you redeem that? Can you pull, call up? Can you help them? Can you identify that? Um, I think that, that that's a part of what a leader has to do. I think it always starts with going like, did this thing with this momentum pass me up? Right. And my gifting? Mm -hmm. Am I even with this iteration? And if I'm stuck in the organization, because usually if you're the leader... It's a reflection of you, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Yeah. If you're doing good, usually it's doing good. Yep. If you're not, usually, unless there's crazy ex circumstances that are beyond your control. Yep. COVID, right? Right. People leaving your state to go to Austin and Coeur d'Alene and Florida and, 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 and Nashville. That's out of your control, mm -hmm. right? So some of that you have to identify. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But outside of a worldwide pandemic that affects for three or four years, outside of that... You've got to take extreme ownership mm -hmm. and figure out the best. I just like that better than trying to make excuses Yeah, of going like, well, it was this and it was that and it yeah. was them and it was them. No, just how can I get, I got to get better. Right. And I think that even when there are things in your world that are maybe smaller than a pandemic, but are still out of your control, it's that mindset of this is not my fault, but it is my responsibility. That's right. Truly. That's right. It's my responsibility and it's my responsibility to be the best, healthiest version of me because um, it's not just that I'm owed that. The other pe people in my world are owed that. And how could I expect anybody to follow me if I'm not, mm. you know? And that's why I just like that idea. Leadership starts with me. It starts with making sure, I'm, you know, <laughs> very cheesy. I'm looking at the man in the mirror. How could I ask you to change your ways if I'm not trying to change my ways? And so I like that you're stuck, but you're not going to stay stuck. You're going to, you're going to evolve. You're going to grow. You're going to change. You're going to lift your lid and you're going to step into your God given potential. We're with you. We're for you. Let's go. Let's go.